and we're on. All right, I'm gonna answer a, real, a quick question. Um, so a question about the glabella and three quarter view, it should look more like a parallelogram than a keystone shape because of foreshortening and the way the eyebrows lean in on one side and away from the other. That's absolutely right, absolutely right. So just ignore all of this. <laughs> um, let's see the glabella will end up looking probably more like this. Is that right? It's hard to do this with it without a real face. <clears throat> Let me try to draw something really quick. Other way then, yeah, that makes more sense. It just ends up being a little bit more oblong. You can tell because of the um, the angles of, as you turn your head, you can tell because of the angles of the, um, well, of the glabella as it, as it reaches the brow bone. So anyway, um, it's a good question though. Hello everybody. Um, Carol, got too much stuff over here. I always have too much stuff. Uh, worked on the profile lesson yesterday. Do you always use all the measuring or once you've been, got it internalized, do you go back and eyeballing everything? That's a really good question. Um, I try to use, uh, I try to use all the major landmarks. So like, you know, get the circle, um, hairline, brow line, nose, chin. I think those are really important. Um, those are the most important ones for sure, and try to make sure I find the center line. The key is, and I'll probably show a little bit of this today, but like it's so, so important that all of those key um, landmarks run parallel to each other. So I make sure that I get those lines in no matter what. And then the center line of the face is obviously the thing that gives us our symmetries so that we can know where the features go on either side. So I find that that one's really important. Uh, so I spend time measuring those. And then what I'll usually do is do things like eyeballing, um, eyeballing the nose, eyeballing the width of the eyes, eyeballing just lots of other things. Um, but those, those first key measurements are, are really crucial. Uh, or I'll take like a really quick pass at measuring, but I'm not like too diligent about it. Um, and I think, yeah, it just comes down to internalizing it all. Uh, good morning, Jackie. No, we're just getting started. Um, you're, you're not, you haven't missed anything, just kind of chatting with, with folks. Naomi, let's put this up on the screen so everyone can see it. Um, on a three quarter view, when you slice off the oval and split it in half for the ear, the vertical line isn't necessarily in the center, is that correct? My ear always falls in the wrong place. Now the vertical line is always in the center. Um, that is very much the case. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna keep drawing over all of this stuff. I could probably erase some of this. Sorry. Just warming up here. Um, I'm just gonna put a little circle over here. So we've got our head. It's not a very good circle. It's fine. Um, and we've got our three quarter ellipse on the side after we've created our equator line. So the, the vertical line is always in the center in the sense that if this is the top and this is the bottom of the ellipse and that's like at its longest point, then you're creating a line here. And then the ear will usually come off at an angle around here. And then the jaw. So that's always where it's, it's always going to be vertically in the center there.
Um, we'll just give it a couple minutes here, let people kind of trickle in. Maybe your angle is wrong. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, you could be pushing the eyes too far over to one side, and then maybe the the circle here is, you know, the or the ellipse maybe isn't quite in the right place. It could be. It could be that. So that's that. It makes it end up pushing back a little bit. Um, oh, you're welcome. Glad you were able to take the class. Glad you enjoyed it. Sounds like people got a lot out of it, which was the whole point. So I'm really, really happy to hear that folks found it useful. Um, if you have questions, hey Karen, if you have, end up having questions today that you want me to answer, um, feel free to ask. I'll do my, I'll do my best. Uh, I don't really have anything in particular planned today, um, except for that frontal view. I also have a three-quarter view just in case, uh, ready to go. But I was thinking I would show you how to actually use the Loomis method. This is going to sound so counterintuitive, but you can use the Loomis method to actually create really weird faces and what I mean by that is you can use it to um, you can use it to create a still believable face that is totally out of proportions and I was thinking I could try to show you what I mean by that with this one will I be using my Loomis method in my contour hatching class I will loosely be using it um, because I don't want to spend uh, a lot of the lessons um, I don't want to spend a lot of the lessons belaboring that because obviously I could spend an entire hour uh, just drawing um, that head and, and I really want the class to be more about that mark making technique so um, so yeah well I do it really quick you'll see me do it really quick in the class um, just to get myself a foundation so, oh, if you don't know, I do have a new class that gets released today, and it's, um, it's called Contour Hatching with me, and it's a mark-making technique. I'll show you an example at the end of the screen or a couple of examples, but um, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. This class was very rigid, uh, very instructional. That class will be a little bit instructional, but more of like a draw-along or paint-along with me, and you'll get to see me play with a lot of other mediums besides drawing, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Polly asks, can you use it to draw animal faces? If you're talking about the Loomis method, uh, I mean, if you break down an animal's face into like a set of abstractions, yeah, for the most part, I mean, they're just going to be different marks. Um, so what do I want to do here? So what I was thinking of today, just trying to figure out where the center of my page is. What I was thinking about doing today was taking this um, Muse. We drew her already in the three-quarter view and uh, I don't remember which lesson it was. It was either seven or eight of, of this class and I was thinking of just kind of showing you how you can take the Loomis method and then do some, I don't want to say weird stuff with it, but you can actually use it to still create believable heads that um, use very exaggerated measurements. And so let's just, let's just start. And I'm going to do some stuff here that um, is sort of like what you're not supposed to do. Like I said, this is really weird because I'm, you, you use the Loomis method to get your features in the right place and to get the relationships between them correct. But you can use the Loomis method to get <laughs> the features in the wrong place. <laughs> And still keep the relationships correct ish anyway this is gonna be weird okay so I'm gonna take this and I can do a normal demo too right after this one I just kind of want to show you what I'm talking about so I'm gonna I'm, I'm seeing that she, it looks like her face is really long and 
I'm seeing that it looks like her eyes are maybe a little bit lower set in her head. So I'm thinking maybe what I want to do is I, this is something caricature artists can, can kind of do. So I'm thinking maybe what I want to do is make her head feel very long and narrow. And I'm thinking I want to pull her eyes so that they feel like they're a little bit lower in her head and maybe scrunch up the distance. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I want to scrunch up the distance between her nose and her brow, or if I want to do that with her mouth. Well, let's get the circle down. And the first thing I'm going to do is not draw a circle. So I want you to think about all the stuff that we know in the Loomis method, and then we're just going to start distorting things. This might actually be a little high when we get into it. Let's see, we, we can erase this. It'll go a little bit lower. Sorry, sometimes it's a little bit weird trying to figure out where, where I'm drawing in the page. All right, let's try this again. So again, instead of a circle, we're gonna draw a little bit of an ellipse. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make our head feel long. And then I'm still going to draw the equator line right in the middle. So the only thing we've done differently right now is we did start with a circle. And I'm still going to take some sides off. That looks a little weird. I'm not going to spend too much time on this kind of demo, but I just wanted to show you again that you can use this method in a number of different ways. It kind of goes back to that idea of like, can you do it with animals? Um, yeah, you can, you can kind of stretch and pull the Loomis method for in a lot of different ways. So uh, anyway, okay, so we've got our core shape here. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do my hairline, which I'll say is probably up here probably a little higher than it normally would be. And so I'm going to give her a big forehead. I think I'm going to scrunch up the area between her brow and her, um, her bottom of her nose and then go along with the rest of her face. So normally we would take this measurement and we would pull it down and we would say somewhere around there is the bottom of her nose. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make an arbitrary mark. I'm going to say that the bottom of her nose is here. So I'm pulling it up so that this distance is shorter. And now I'm going to take this distance here, and I'm going to use that, and maybe even go a little bit longer as the bottom of her chin. Cindy asks, so we draw that shape now? Sorry, tend to watch, not draw along. Um, we're, I'm, all I'm doing is kind of exaggerating the Loomis method, so it's not necessary to draw along or, or anything like that. We're just doing all the same pro, like front view steps. We're just kind of changing um, the measurements intentionally. So now I'm going to draw my center line. This is always the hardest. That vertical, ugh, got a little out of whack at the bottom there. I've been, I've been using the Loomis method in um, some of my stuff. If you've ever seen my stuff, when I get pretty exaggerated features or just want to kind of create something weird. I'll, um, I'll still use the Loomis method, I just end up using it like this. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and pull a jawline down. A 
Oof. Some angles are just really hard to draw. Okay. So we've got a long head, as you can see. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start getting into things like the nose and the eye. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw um, the glabella. So it's that trapezoid shape uh, between the eyebrows. I'll even go a step further and just stretch that area out because it looks like to me in this photo, her eyes are, her eyes are a little bit bigger and it's exaggerated by um, the makeup that she has on and the fact that her irises look for some reason insanely big in her in her head right now. <laughs> um, but we're gonna go ahead and, and push those out even a little bit wider than they actually are. Okay, and so now we're going to create our nose abstraction. Sorry, this is, this area is the glabella, no Siri. Does your phone ever do that? Wake up whenever you say the word serious. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that and just still make it wide, just bring it in a lot more. Because this is hitting right at that nasal bone. So I wanna make sure the nose is narrow up at the top of the bridge. And let's go ahead and get a little closer. Okay, so now what we want to do is, we're just gonna leave this here. This is kind of a poorly drawn one, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, start to fill in where the eye is. And I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of guidance here to figure out where the eye socket will be. Okay, so normally what we say about the eye is that it's halfway, it's exactly halfway between the top of the head and the bottom of the head. But we can push it, <laughs> we can push it down if we want to. So that's normally where it would be. So I'm gonna take it down just a little bit. This is going to look strange. I just wanna say that out, out loud right away. A lot of my lines are probably a little too dark. So that's where our tear duct is gonna hit. And I'm gonna push her eyes out. So normally the eye, the tear duct of the eye will align with somewhere around the outer wing of the nose. So it kind of be a straight up and down line here, but I'm gonna push it out a little bit. What I mean by push it out, I mean, I'm just gonna use an angle to make it go further out. So that's where my tear duct is gonna sit. And let's go ahead and just draw. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a shorter pencil here so I can do this a little bit easier. We're just gonna draw a really simple set of eyes. So the reason why we can even do this, by the way, is because of symmetries and parallel, parallelism. Um, I think that one of the things people struggle most with and why faces end up being a little bit weird is that they don't stick to um, making sure that the, the lines of the face are parallel. What I mean by the lines, I'm talking about these very key landmarks that they 
they tend to, and you can look at a lot of the drawings from you know students in the class, you can see that um, oftentimes when things start to go a little bit weird is when uh, things don't, things aren't parallel anymore. And that's when things start to look skewed. The other time that uh, things look weird is when they're not symmetrical. So if you can pay attention to those two things, which is exactly what all these key um, landmarks are. See, I can already tell that this eye needs to be bigger. Um, if you pay attention and put, just make sure that you get those key landmarks correct. Hairline, brow line, bottom of the nose, bottom of the chin. Make sure that those are all parallel to one another. And then make sure you get a good center line right in center, regardless of where it's turned, you know, it, it's going to turn away, it's going to move over. But if you have those things in place, those end up actually being just the most important bits. So I still really, really recommend you, you spend the time getting those first steps correct. That's why somebody asked earlier, it's like, do you, when you're doing portraits, you know, do you, do you always kind of use the Loomis method and do all those measurements and stuff? And the answer is, for those initial marks, absolutely. But then later on, I kind of I can go a lot quicker because I've over time just trained my eye to to know um, when things are off and when distances are off. Uh, would I consider teaching the Loomis method part two, maybe with the planes of the head? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, I mean, there's a, yeah, there's definitely a lot more. I, I tried to simplify the Loomis method in a couple of areas because there's, there's just so much information there. Um, so there's, there's more to explore. I'm not sure if it warrants an entire class though, unless you want to get into things like perspective. Um, So we're still doing our eyebrow. We're going to make it wrap around. I could have drawn those rhythm lines if I wanted to. They're a little hard to see what I just did, but that's kind of where the eyebrow is, is going to turn. So again, trying to keep things symmetrical here. I'm going to erase Bella. We're going to go ahead and do the nose here. Uh, going to take out some of this because it's a little noisy. Make sure that we're wrapping the wings in not going for perfection here just going for believable and giving her a very small nose just to really emphasize that space between the eyes Just gonna give it a little bit of shape there, just so you can see it a bit easier. Erase some of this stuff. And then let's go ahead and do the mouth. I'm still gonna do the thirds here. So that means that I'm gonna to try to find a third, a third, a third. So it's just somewhere right here. I'm 
might be a little bit up higher, I would say. This is one of those areas where I'll usually just kind of eyeball it. Can usually just kind of see where a third is. Hey, Rakesh. Uh, where did I learn the Loomis method? I learned it uh, Watts Atelier online. Um, uh, Jeff Watts teaches it alongside kind of embedded with the Riley method, which is another method that can be used um, for, for drawing heads. Um, if I were to say that the Loomis method is sort of like the geometric way of drawing heads, then the Riley method is the more organic, rhythmic way of drawing heads. And they can be used in conjunction with each other um, because so much of it kind of um, a lot of the key measurements are the same and then there are other things that just give you a nice balance uh, in the Riley method that really really help e even more reinforce where um, where features are so as you can see I'm, I'm kind of using all the same similar like similar landmarks where I'm saying that you know the middle of the the sorry the top lip and bottom lip meet somewhere around here the um and what i mean by that is a third of the way down a third of the way down the chin's going to start here we've just got a lot more space now between these areas i'm not going to draw this super detailed all we've done is just kind of changed and squashed different different areas so that we can create, it's still the same relationships in terms of um, some really basic stuff. I'm just very intentionally moving things out a little bit or, or pulling things in a little bit or stretching, stretching stuff out. And so this head, even though it's completely unrealistic, still feels uh, like it's solid. And then I could probably come in and just going to kind of rough in some hair here. Her hair is amazing. You can't see this. Let me zoom out. I'm giving her a lot of hair. So yeah, this gets into like more of an, like I said, a caricature slash illustrative kind of approach. But you could do things in a much more subtle way. And as long as you keep things parallel, keep um, things symmetrical, then the features and sort of the head itself will, will still hold together. I should have made the nose long and scrunched the mouth. Jackie, your eraser is making a mess. It's called Art Gum. Can you recommend something that will remove but not blur the pencil? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend Art Gum. 
um, erasers. They're, uh, I'm trying to remember. I use them for like some type of drawing. I can't really remember which, which type, uh, but I don't like them. <laughs> um, I recommend a kneaded eraser, uh, which is this because you can shape it and turn it into what you need. And uh, I also recommend um, a plastic eraser. Stetler makes one of my favorite. And it's a much, it's like a really hard eraser that doesn't, that doesn't pull up um, or pull the medium in a way that kind of like, yeah, blurs it or smears it. Because uh, I know exactly what you're talking about with that, <sighs> Jackie. Um, anyway, that was that. I just wanted to show you that you can you can kind of bend and manipulate these things in order to um, still make something believable, but but kind of arrive in a place that uh, might be a little bit unexpected. Um, I'm going to do another one. Anne says her favorite eraser is from Tombow the Black. I need to put a little note to myself. To take a look and see, see what that eraser is. All right, I'm going to just double check here and make sure that my paper is in a good place for when I zoom in. Double check. Okay. Sorry. So the only thing about drawing on stream in a physical way is that you have to keep pulling paper out. Yeah, Jackie, I, I would highly recommend just switching to a kneaded eraser. It can be less effective at getting a really dark mark off the page, I would say, but um, I think it's really important to not be using lots of dark marks, especially when you're using the Loomis method, because you create so many construction lines. You just got to make sure you're, you can erase them. I mean, if you've seen you know, the lessons that I did, uh, I don't make dark marks until the very end. so. Uh, let me pull this image up on my own screen. I have so many screens. Okay. All right. So I was thinking I would just kind of do this one. Um, it's a little, there's a little bit of distortion, but part of me wants to see if I can kind of create a little bit uh, of a shadow map, um, which is something people have wanted to see, but uh, it was really kind of outside of the scope of this class, unfortunately. And I also picked a lot of reference photos that didn't have good lighting. They just had very even lighting, which is like the worst lighting. And if you're really trying to draw something that has believable form. But I, I intentionally picked the reference images that we did use for this class with that even lighting so that you couldn't rely on uh, light and like the, the big shapes like you can see here in this reference. Um, sorry, uh, but yeah, the big shapes of light here that you can see in this, in this image, um, I didn't want those to be sort of a, not a crutch, but I think a lot of people kind of um, a lot of people use that to figure out where features are, and it's very useful. But I think the Loomis method is, is something that is meant to work in spite of that, in spite of having that. So anyway, that's why I picked the reference photos I did. So I'm going to try to create my center line. by echoing that ellipse. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, Pink Panther erasers can be good for very specific, I would say, types of work. Really good for charcoal. Um, I've definitely used those a lot for charcoal, uh, specifically for pulling out highlights. So we're doing all our basic stuff here. Draw a circle, draw a side plane. Her head's turned quite a bit, so we'll see if I've even done this enough. I'm actually going to do a really quick measurement here. Okay, this should be fine. Maybe? I could probably push it a little bit further. I think a lot of folks don't... I'm guilty of this, but uh, I think erasing is underrated. <laughs> I think it's really important in this method to get these initial marks pretty darn good. Um, and so I think it's really important to be willing to go in and just erase your work. So like right now, I'm just kind of widening this ellipse from where it was. And then I'm going to echo that ellipse. Just so I can get that center line in somewhat of the right place. Let's go ahead and drop the side plane here. Always, 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 always in the middle, equidistant here and here, longest part of the ellipse. I think erasing is almost a dirty word because um, people don't do it. <laughs> like they're not will like people aren't willing to like see that something's you know, like they've gone so far they've. They've made all this progress in their drawing, but really it's like, you just need to erase something. You need to correct something. Um, I erase so much in my drawings, and I think so much could be solved by just people taking a step back for just a second and, and um, yeah, erasing, erasing stuff if they see there's a mistake. So now I'm going to create the hairline. Remember what I said before about parallel lines? This is that moment where this line needs to be parallel to this line, needs to be parallel to the nose, and needs to be par parallel to the chin. That is the most important thing that you can do for yourself. I've seen a lot of... Um, drawings that were going to be, they look like they were off to a good start, and then like this line ends up kind of going up at an angle, and this one is maybe going straight, and then this one's kind of going out at an angle, and then things start to get a little, a little messed up. So it's really just important to, to have these parallel lines. Taking my time here with these measurements. Okay. We're going to pull our center line down. We're going to pull our center line straight down. So I have an added benefit right now because I, I'm actually recording this. Right, I'm streaming it, and so I can see what my camera sees, and it's hugely helpful for knowing if I've got um, lines that are straight or not straight. I know that's not quite straight; it's a little bit curved, but we're gonna keep it. Uh, okay, so we're gonna drop a jawline here. And we know that her ear is somewhere over here. 
just gonna look and see where the top of it sits. It's just below the the brow. So her ears somewhere over here. And then her her um the bottom of her earlobe or ear sits a little bit below. Okay. So you would like to see the marks or measurements done on top of the reference photo. Um, Polly, I don't know if you're in the class, but I was thinking, I actually took this image and went into Photoshop and did exactly that, uh, just so you could see how all of the measurements actually do, um, they do hold true. Her, the one thing that's different on hers, and this might just be, you can kind of see, uh, the one thing that's slightly different on her is that if you were to look at the eyes and you can see that they're not even, right? So I've got my top of this closer eye there, top of this closer eye here. So this eye is a little bit up, higher, and I can't quite tell if it's just because the, I mean, we're dealing with distortion here because this is likely a camera that's pretty close to her face. But if I look at the mouth, it looks like the corners of the mouths would be parallel with each other. We're not seeing much of, like we're not seeing the other side of this nostril. So it feels like our eye line is somewhere around here. And then it's kind of skewing up over here. And because of that, this eye is not directly in the middle of her head. And I can show you what I mean by that. So if I were to measure from the bottom of her chin to the corner of her tear duct and I were to take it all the way up you can see that it goes over the top of her head because the top of her head isn't at the top of her hair so there's a little bit of distortion happening here but I did do all the measurements just to see uh, if anything didn't wasn't holding true on her face specifically and it's pretty much all all pretty solid Okay, so I'm going to try to get this nose angle correct. And when I when I'm put my arm up, I know you can't really. See. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> How does that look? Terrible. Yeah, I've got a webcam over here, and it's on a bit of a swivel. Um, when I when I try to figure out where, or how big, or how long the nose is. What I do is I hold my arm out and I use my pencil and I tilt it and I look for I look for an angle. And when I say that I mean what I'm seeing is me going like this to try to like see where and what that angle is of the nose. So I would try to replicate that angle over here on my page. Does that make sense? Because I think a lot of people also were struggling when I was looking at people's drawings. We're struggling a little bit with, with like the angle of the nose. And that was dictating how, how long the nose would be and how, um, how wide the head looked. It just does a lot of different things. Did I miss something here? Yep. This is a little bit low.
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll share that Photoshop draw over um, with the measurements. Do I have a link to this reference photo? Um, I can post a link in the class uh, after this. Um, Okay, oops, well, oh, there we go, making, making bad marks now. Okay, I'm gonna find the middle of her head right now, see if I can find that eye. I'm not gonna push it, I'm not gonna push it up too much higher. Just make sure that that's pretty good. Yeah. So that's, I think you can see that. The tip of my pencil is kind of going up above her head, but it's um, sitting right at the jaw, right at the chin. So I'm just going to let her, basically her head be up, or her eye be up a little bit higher than it's supposed, quote unquote, supposed to be or normally is because it is in the photo. So it'll hopefully look correct. And now I'm just, doing a really quick um, look-see at this line, which was just the side plane of the nose, and now I'm turning it into the, uh, the line that takes, that goes up from the wing to the tear duct, so that we've got, got this. You can really see the depth in her eye, um, just in terms of, like, uh, that whole idea of like Pac-Man. You can really see her eye wrapping around. You can see the skin of the fold of the eye kind of coming over too. And then we can just barely see the other eye over here. All right, so let's go ahead and get this nose going. Looks pretty weird right now. Uh, the link to the other photo should just be in the description in the video below. This is not a good nostril. Just trying to observe the angles here. OK, 
Okay. Get rid of this line because it looks like bridge of her nose is crazy. And then we'll create this. So I'm not talking a whole lot here, mostly because I just want to kind of get as far along in this as possible, uh, considering we've only got 10 minutes left with each other. So um, just going to start making some shorthand measurements and stuff so maybe I can show you what a shadow map looks like. Parallel, 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 parallel. Okay, so I did this little line here, the one that's kind of curving out, um, just to represent that tooth cylinder. And um, probably out a little too much. And I'm gonna look for the corner of her mouth, which is probably gonna be right about here. And we're looking at these pillows in the lips, and I can see that we've got our first one, and then we've got our second one, which is on the bottom, and then we've got our third one, which is on the top, and then we've got our other one that's kind of coming out to give, a, give us a rhythm that, uh, that makes it feel like things are in front of one another. Makes it feel like those lips are in front of one another. Okay, and then we've got our bottom of our bottom lip. Then we're going to go ahead and create this exterior line into the chin, just like this. Then we've got our cheek and the other part of the mouth. Let's just start erasing some of this stuff. Uh, just kind of gonna get a little bit of something going here for hair as quick as I can. This is definitely a little bit rushed, to say the least. For some reason today, my needed eraser is not erasing so great. I think I want to pull this chin in just a little bit. Yeah, 
Anyway, okay. So we've got a basic head here. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is, oof, this is just a mess. Um, I'm gonna kind of do a really quick shadow map. And so if you don't know what a shadow map is, it's, um, it's basically just trying to describe all the different light, dark areas as best you can um, using different types of line weights. This is another reason why using this kind of pencil where you can go really on its side to get like a softer, uh, a softer edge is good because some shadows all diff have different kinds of edges and I don't even have a really good Let's see if this is any better. So I want a really soft edge here as we're coming around the ball of her nose. And then we've got a really hard edge over here. And now I gotta make some decisions about where Some of these lines go, some of these shadows go. We've got a cast shadow over here. So it's gonna be a hard edge and it casts down. And then we kind of soften out over here. And we've got some hard cast shadows in the lip as well. And what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just looking for shadow shapes, light and shadow, where those two things meet. And I'm just looking at it in terms of uh, strictly light and dark. I'm not thinking about half tones. I'm only thinking about making decisions about where does the light start, where does it end, and what kind of sha uh, sh shadows edge is it? Is it a hard edge? Is it a soft edge? So I think you can start to see how that ends up becoming a map that you can then, I mean, not quite fill in like a coloring book, but it's, it's kind of something similar to that where you just get a really good sense of the volumes of the face. And so usually for me, this is like what the next step would be after scaffolding in everything um, using the Loomis method. Because this is what this is what starts to bring, really bring the form forward, and this is usually where you start getting a really good likeness. Is uh is once you start creating the shadow shapes and stuff, so you can see the light. For a person who does use shadow patterns, how long might it take to learn this method? I'm very intrigued by the Loomis method. Uh, a month. <laughs> That's how long the class is. It takes about a month. Uh, hardness, softness of this pencil. It is a four B but it's a Wolf's Carbon Pencil, so. Warby. Warby. Um, we're right at the end here 
of the stream. Uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who came out, did the class. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will still be checking in on the class for like the next week or so. So if you have any any questions you want answered um, or your work to be looked at and just kind of like critiqued, I'm more than happy to just at tag me. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I've got a new class. It's called Contour Hatching. Um, we're going to be doing fun stuff like this where we're using a mark making technique called um, contour hatching. And so uh, we're going to be doing it in four different mediums, graphite, colored pencil, uh, ink, and gouache. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, I believe that there is a promotion right now. I don't have it, the code in front of me, but there should be a sketchy promotion right now where you, uh, you get, I believe it's 30% off two classes um, when you buy two classes or more. But I will wait and make sure that uh, Sketchy says that's that's correct. Um, anyway, I think that that's, that's it uh, as far as this session goes. I will have another stream next Sunday where we start kicking off the contour hatching thing. So if you're on, on the fence as to whether or not you want to purchase the class, um, come join me for same time, same place uh, next week's stream. And I'll be doing, I think I'm going to start with graphite. So we'll, we'll start doing some of those fun drawings. Anyway, yes, SAS30, promo code. 30% off any two or more sketchy art school classes. Thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, go check out Dylan's stream happening right now um, over on the sketchy YouTube channel. Um, yeah, just thanks for everything. It's been great. I appreciate you.